Hi everyone. So I wanted to put this uh, together because I realized when I was uh, making the lab that you guys may have some questions about how to calculate some of these measures of germination and I might not have gone into it in detail enough uh, within the lecture. So if we are going to measure germination, there are different ways we can look at it or describe our data. And I have two separate um, tables up here. Now this first table, we have a hypothetical example where we are going to uh, be planting 10 seeds and we have two different treatments of each seed, uh, whatever they are, right? So maybe these guys are stratified, these aren't. Uh, we're planting 10 seeds in each treatment and we want to measure their germination. Well, we can look at it in where we track each individual seed and we're going to uh, determine how many days until each of that each seed germinated, which I'm showing over here, uh, which is probably the more rare case that you will actually track each individual seed. The other way of looking at it is uh, going by day and counting how many seeds germinated each day. And that's most likely what you'll see uh, or be keeping track of uh, especially if you are sowing a lot of seeds, right? If it's just like a couple specialized experiment, it's a specialized experiment where you're just sowing a couple seeds, maybe you want to keep track of each individual one, that's fine. But for the most part, it's most likely going to be you're sowing a lot of seeds and you're just going to keep track of how many germinate each day, right? So each table uh, is representing that, right? This one is where we've kept track of each individual seed and the time it took for it to germinate. And this one is where we are just uh, counting the number of seeds that have germinated uh, or when they germinated and each day that they did, right? So giving this, given this data, um, what we can do is calculate these important measures of germination that I talked about, right? And they are germination percentage, speed, and uniformity. And I'm just going to give you, I'm going to go through these so you get an idea of how to do this. So the first that we're going to look at is germination percentage. And this is really easy. This is the percent of seeds that germinated out of the total number that you planted or the total seed lot. So in this case, I sowed 10 seeds in each treatment. And I want to know, calculate how many out of those 10 actually germinate. Right. So if we look, use, I'll, I'll do it using each uh, table. Right. So over here, it's, it's relatively simple because I have each seed broken. Uh, I have it measured by each seed. So out of a total of 10 seeds, if I'm looking at treatment number one, out of the total of 10, only eight germinated, right? We have two that didn't germinate. So that would be eight divided by 10, which is 0.8. And then you multiply that by 100 to give you 80%. So that would be your germination percentage for treatment one. And then if we were looking over here, we see that they all germinated and that would give us 100%. Now, you can, um, if you just had the information in this table, you could do the same thing. You would need to know the number of seeds total planted, right? That should be included. And then all you would do is add up how many seeds germinated in uh, treatment one. And a quick way to do that, if you need to add up a number, a column of numbers in Excel, you click on it, drag it down, and then you see down here, it gives you the total number. Right, so we have 10 uh, columns, that wouldn't apply here, and then the sum, and that's what we're looking at here. So that sum gives us eight. So we can see out of this treatment one, we had eight seeds that germinated, just like it matches up over here. Eight divided by total 10 seeds planted times 100 gives you 80%. And then you do the same thing over here. Well, we can even add that extra one. A total of 10, right, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 10 divided by 10 times 100 gives you 100%, right? So that's germination percentage. Now, germination speed, uh, there is a caveat here, right? So we are calculating germination speed by the time it takes to get to 50% germination, or T50. Where there is an ambiguity is that this T50 can refer to the total seed population or the final population percentage. And unfortunately, uh, different resources will give you a different um, way of calculating it or what they're, what they're calculating it by, right? Some will calculate it by the total seed population. 
Others say to calculate it by the final population percentage. I tried looking it up to see if there was a consensus. Your book tells you to do it by final population percentage. Some papers that I saw told you to do it by total seed population. So ultimately, if you are going to be describing this data, say you did an experiment or and now you want to tell people about it, if you are calculating germination proceed, speed by this T50, make sure that you say whether you are doing it by the total seed population or the final population percentage, right? Because that'll give people information on how you're doing it. And the difference between these things, I'm going to show you right now. Right, so when we talk about total seed population, we are talking about the total number of seeds that we sowed. So if we go to this treatment number one, right, we have, if we're talking about the total seed population and we're trying to get to the time to 50% germination, we would want to get the time that it took for our seeds to get to, to the time it took for five of our seeds to germinate because five of 10, right? We have a total of 10 seeds. 50% of 10 would be five seeds, right? So that would be the total time it took for, for us, the amount of time it took for us to get to five seeds that had germinated. That makes sense, right? Now, if we were comparing this with final population percentage, if we look over here, we only germinated a total of eight seeds. So 50% of eight is four. So if we were doing germination speed by uh, final population percentage, we would wanna calculate the time it took for us to get to four seeds, right? So there is a difference, there could be a difference in our results depending on whether we are looking at, uh, we are comparing the total seed population or the final population percentage. And so, for example, we'll go back here with the data that we have. And in this case, if we were doing this by germination speed, let me get rid of this. Uh, germination speed da, 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 by total population. This may get moved around a bit, but that's okay. Germination speed by total population. Again, our total seed population is 10 seeds. 50% of 10 is five, so we need the time it took us to get to five seeds. In this case, if we're looking over here, in day three, we had two seeds. In day four, an additional three germinated, so that gave us five seeds, so that our germination speed, our time to get to five seeds, would be four days. That so you can see that. Now, for this example, it's going to um, it's going to be the same, right? Because I just put in random numbers, but I'll show you um, a different. I pop. Where is my percent sign? There it is. So in this case, if we were doing it by final population percentage, that would be the time in days it took for us to get to, if we're looking at treatment number one, it took to get to four seeds, right? Because we totally, we germinated a total of eight. 50% of eight is four seeds. So again, in this case, we had two seeds germinate on day three and then an additional three. So we got to four seeds by day four. So we would have the same measure right here, right? So here, it doesn't make too much of a difference given our data. But let me change things around to um, show you how it could potentially make a difference, right? So if I simply, instead of having three germinated on day four, if we had two germinate on day four and one on day five. Now let's calculate this again, right? If we are going to look at germination speed by total population, well, that's the time, again, that's going to take us to get to five seeds, right? Our total population is 10. 50% of 10 is five. So now we had three, two seeds on day three, two seeds on day four, that gives us four. And then another seed on day five, that gives us five right there. So that's going to give us five days. And now if we're doing it by population percentage, 
and again, we are looking instead of now the time to get to five seeds, it's the time to get to four seeds because we took 50% of the number of seeds that we germinated, eight is four. All right, so now we are doing the time to get to four seeds. We had two on day three, two on day four. That gives us a total of four. That's four days, right? So you can see, again, maybe it's not a huge difference in all the time, but if you're doing an experiment and you want to be very accurate, depending on how you're calculating this germination speed can determine, ultimately, it could change your results, whether you are calculating it by total seed population or final population percentage. In your lab, I'm having you do it by final, uh, by population percentage instead of total population. So that's how we do, uh, that's how we'll calculate germination speed. And then lastly, we're going to do germination uniformity. And again, same thing, uh, you can do it by um, total seed population or final population percentage. We'll be doing it final population percentage. Uniformity. So we need to know 75, the time it took to get to 75% germinated and the time it took to get to 25% germinated. So we're doing by final population percentage. So we have a total of eight seeds that germinated. 75% of eight, and if you don't know it offhand, what you can do is you can just use a calculator or you can use Excel, and you can do 75%, so 0.75 times eight equals six. And so that would be T75. And then T25 is going to equal 0.25 times 8. Use this two. Right? So to calculate germination uniformity, we need to calculate the time that it took to get us six seeds germinated and subtract from that the time that it took for two seeds to germinate. Right, so again, and this is where this, this table provides much more information than, than this guy over here. So if we look at the time that it's going to take us to get to six seeds, we can count it out. So we've got two by day three, another two by day four, that gives us four, another one on day five, that gives us five, and then another one on day six, which gives us our six seeds, right? Again, there's our six seeds. So it's going to take us six days to get to T75. And then how many days does it get us, I guess, to get to T25? Well, to get to two seeds, right? Well, right over here by day three, at day three, we had our two seeds. And then to calculate this, we do, oops, equals six for T75 minus two for T25. And that gives us a germination uniformity of four days, right? So those are the uh, three measures of germination. Uh, hopefully this helps you in uh, doing your lab activity. If you guys get stumped or have any additional questions about this, let me know and I will uh, help you guys out. So that is it. I will talk to you later.